Amen. Just close your eyes. Just focus on the presence of Jesus. He came Prince of Peace. And people watching online right now, people in the room, if you need the peace of God, the peace of God, just think about it, consider it. And this line, glory to God in the highest, when you elevate God higher, the problems that surround our life become smaller. So I want you to stop thinking about the complexity of the season and simply just think God is on the throne. Let the peace of God come into your life. I pray it right now, declare it. Thank you that you are Prince of Peace. Thank you that your government, there is no end. I thank you for your anointing in this place, God. I thank you that your anointing is touching people watching online right now. That as we engage, we don't go through Christmas traditions like it's meaningless. But as we take the time to worship God and take the time to be in church, we thank You that when our praises go up, Lord, Your presence comes down in our life. Thank You, Jesus. And I thank You that when we consider Your presence, Lord, our hearts are filled and warmed with Your peace. Christmas is a warm feeling. Christmas should be a warm feeling. I see fires and candles and marshmallows and hot chocolate and presents and hugs and gift giving. I see stockings and slippers and pajamas. <laughs> warm. It's beautiful. I see closeness and proximity and sentiment, depth, value, perspective, hope. In the name of Jesus. And if you're picking up what I'm putting down, I'm not saying that our Christmas trinkets provide the answers. What I'm saying is there's something about this season that was birthed long before we talked about Santa Claus that provided the answer to the world. And His name is Jesus. He is warm. He brings light. He brings hope and restoration and healing and transformation in our lives. He is close. He is not far. He is not cold. He is not callous. He is not judgmental. He is fatherly. He is good. He is endearing and He's loving. He's caring and compassionate, empathetic, but also transcendent. He's understood through revelation, but cannot be understood through sovereignty. Our Saviour is mighty, He's highest, He's Creator. He's before and will ever be. And you're in church. And this is the time where you set your sight on Him, you cast your cares on Him. And man, if we can't remember that at Christmas. So in a prayerful moment of thanksgiving, under your breath, you just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that on this holy night, 2,021 years ago, Lord, on, on this time in this season, You came. You departed from Your divinity in the world and You came to embrace humanity for me. I thank You, Lord God, that You're good. I thank You that You love me. I thank You that I'm not alone. I thank You that I am in Your care, in Your presence. Lord God, we celebrate You. We praise You, God. And I thank You that this season could potentially be the greatest and most prophetic season for anybody in need right now. So thank You for the presence of God. I thank You that You are Emmanuel, God with us. 
And that is a prophecy of all prophecies that God of gods, King of kings, is living and residing in our heart if we so receive Him. And everybody said, Amen, Amen. Come on, with some gratitude, give God some praise. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Awesome. Thank you, Ben. That was good. How many people are very grateful for our team of musicians and singers leading us in worship? And I did say this last week, but for anyone that missed it, you can be seated. Uh, I did say this last week that there are some tracks that are being produced, ready to be released in the coming year. They, it takes a bit of time to get the quality down and make it all awesome for Spotify, but there's some awesome stuff coming up, and we're very excited about that, hey? Oh, I said Spotify, and I opened up Spotify on my iPad. <laughs> That's not going to help me preach. I just play a Pastor Phil Pringle podcast and put the microphone to it and lip sync. Would anybody like that today? No, it's awesome. It's good to be here. Recent announcements in Toronto for anyone that's listening on podcast. Uh, it's definitely with the variant going around the world has posed new annoyances and botherings and, and uh, just feelings of all sorts and hopefully not fear for people that see themselves in church reading God's Word and praying to God. Hopefully it's not fear that is coming into your life. Perfect love, Jesus casts out all fear. Um, but nonetheless, it, does, it is disruptive. It's annoying, especially when it comes around Christmas. I don't know if you remember last year. Hopefully you forget, but there was some uh, uh, bothering announcements around Christmas last year. But uh, we um, pray and believe that you would uh, feel celebrated and be able to celebrate other people around Christmas. It is meant to be a warm season. That's why I focused on that. And try and always see the cup half full. Try and always focus on the positive. Amen? Amen. You good? You, you, you there? Can you hear me? All right, I can kind of hear you. Um, so it's good to have you here, though. If you're visiting or tuning in online, uh, Merry Christmas in advance. Love you, care, believe for you, praying for you. Why don't you turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 1. And Christmas is such a good time to focus on Christmas stories and what's going on in the Bible around Christmas time. And, uh, and it's good to just, you read the common stories uh, around Christmas, but don't read them and not really read into them what is going on. Like, look, take a look at it, and the, it's the most significant season of the year, along with Easter and every other Sunday and every other day. <laughs> every day with Jesus is significant. Amen? Amen. Awesome. So Luke chapter 1, we read the story of Mary, uh, uh, an angel, Gabriel, visiting Mary and tells, gives Mary the announcement, the news. She's pledged to be married. She's betrothed to her love of her life, Joseph. And Gabriel comes and disrupts her life and tells her an announcement. You are going to have a baby. And she's doing the math because she's a virgin. That means she did not know a man, and she uh, found this disruption come into her life. And so we'll read the story where the angel said to Mary, don't be afraid. Verse 30 of Luke chapter 1, don't be afraid. Mary, you have found favor. Somebody say favor. You've found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus. He will be great. That's an understatement of the century, Gabriel, of all the description. Hey, he's going to be great. Um, he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. And she says, how will this be? Mary asked, since I am a virgin. She's trying to work it out. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you or surround you with a cloud of glory, that means, that and will empower you, will, the, will, the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Most Holy One will be born and will be called Son of God. And then he sa says this interesting in verse 36, even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. I want you to remember the fact that Gabriel pointed out Elizabeth. Elizabeth, your relative, was going to have Jesus' cousin. 
And she, uh, who was said to be unable to conceive in her, she's already six months pregnant. For no word from God will ever fail. How awesome is that for a promise? No word from God will ever fail. This is what I want us to focus on this next verse, verse 38. Mary responds in a prayer, and I want us to see this prayer, look into this prayer, maybe consider praying the same prayer in our lives right now, and especially as we consider 2022. Last week, I was talking about not living according to man's ways, not living according to Herod's ways, but live according to Jesus' ways, baby in a manger ways. What that means is let's live like Jesus did and understand that the advancement of the kingdom comes through doing things God's way, not through doing things Herod's way. Herod's way equals human strength. So let's go into 2022 not doing things in our strength. That was the point of last week. If you missed it, there's the footnotes. Let's go into 2022 doing things trusting the way of Jesus. Amen. So let's go into, in addition to that, let's go into 2022 praying the way Mary prayed. She said, I am the Lord's servant May your word to me, may your word to me, may your word, may your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. I didn't, I didn't even know if you responded. <laughs> like, good job. It's like, okay, cool. Mission accomplished. Leaves her. Okay. When you think about this, I start to ask the question, uh, did, did Mary teach Jesus how to pray? You got to think. Jesus was Mary's child and you know, as children grow up, they tend to bring on or they're going to hear what their, their parents carry or whatever. And I just wondered, did Mary teach Jesus how to pray? Because if you look in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed the prayer of 2022. Matthew 26, verse 38 to 42, it says this, Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed to the point of death. Sounded like Jesus was going through COVID. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Go a little farther. He's talking to his disciples. He fell face down on the ground and prayed. This might be how some of you might feel going into 2022. He said this, My father, if it's possible, let this cup or let the purpose of all this depart from me, yet not my will, but your will. Mary's prayer. May your word to me be fulfilled. Where did Jesus learn to pray like this? Verse 40, then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Wow, that was really loud. <laughs> found them sleeping. Could you men have kept watch with me for one hour? He kept asking Peter, could you of C3 Toronto prioritize 21 days of prayer and fasting starting from January 2nd and finishing on January 23rd to set your year up in the will and plan of Jesus? I think you possibly could. Are you going to sleep in? No one said yes. Verse 41, watch and pray. He says, it, watch and pray lest you be fall into temptation. The spirit is willing and the flesh is weak. 2022 is a year that I believe is God's will. You should take some notes right now because you're setting up for your resolutions or setting up for what you're going to be dreaming and what you're going to be thinking about going into 2022. I hope you're thinking in advance. She said, I'm your servant, let your will to me be fulfilled. What she didn't say is, Lord, you're my servant, let my word to you be fulfilled. That's what a resolution is. Do we think God is our servant or are we God's servant? Mary's prayer started a revelation of who she was. She didn't say, God, you serve me and this, and this is what I want, and this is what I want, and this is what I want. Didn't get this from Santa this year. So Jesus, this is what I want. This is what I want. You're my servant. May my word to you be fulfilled. Thank you, Jesus. I wrote down my goals for 2022. I think potentially I want to propose to us that maybe we spent too many years praying the opposite of Mary's prayer. God, you're my servant. Or maybe we would never admit that we pray it, but we live that way. We live in the posture of God. You're my servant, like the genie that lives in the Bible. And I, don't, I just think that maybe, maybe, I'm suggesting that maybe there's a better way. 
Not, not your will. No, not my will, <laughs> but yours be done. God's will, God's will. 2022, God's will. He said this, my father, if it's not possible, let this cup be taken from you and let this cup be taken away unless I drink it. May your will be done. So did Jesus learn how to pray from Mary's testimony, from Mary's prayer? He taught the disciples the same thing. The disciples said, teach us how to pray. So Jesus learnt something inherently from somewhere, had an intuition to pray when he got to the trialing, most troubling moment of his life. And then if you read in Matthew 6, verse 9 to 13, how did he teach the disciples how to pray? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Because I'm about to pray this in the garden. I want to tell you what I'm about to pray in the garden. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, there's a PGA championship happening this weekend. I like golf, okay? Anyone else like golf? Just need one other witness in the room, somebody, anybody. It's all right, it can only just be one. Golf's a single person sport, really. But, you know, Coco Melon goes off on Sunday afternoon sometimes and it's daddy's TV time and I'll just put on golf. It's relaxing, you know? And uh, there's a championship going on right now. Tiger Woods and his 12-year-old son, Charlie, are playing a best ball tournament, a scramble tournament. And, you know, they just, Charlie just got a record of... Uh, like eight birdies in a row, which is like crazy. Like it's a broken record for this tournament. Anyway, I think they're like, I think when last time I looked, they were number two. I don't know if it's finished. But it doesn't surprise me that Charlie is good at golf. It kind of makes sense. I asked Noah, what, what's your favorite sport? He said Golf. If he maybe wakes up one day and has a better revelation, then maybe he chooses a cooler sport like basketball or something like that. But, you know, Daddy likes golf. And when we play golf together, like, it's some of the most, it's awesome. Play a little par three course together, got him a little set of clubs. It's just nat- what come, what's in me comes natural. Mary, in John chapter 2, when Jesus turned water into wine... She was carrying a testimony in her heart that if you do the will of what the Father says in heaven, it works out. Gabriel said, this is the word. Mary said, let your word to me be fulfilled. She wasn't sure. First, she was trembling. But then in John chapter 2, when there was a, water, when there was a, water, a wine problem, she said to the, she straight away said, listen, everybody gather around, gather around. Disciples gather around. Whatever he says, do it. Do it, because last time I stepped out on God's word, I gave birth to the Messiah. It works out when you do it God's way. And Mary didn't hesitate in John chapter two. She's like, there's a problem here that needs an answer. Just do what he says. I wonder how good it will go for you and I in 2022 if we just do what he says. What a wonderful thought. It's not as easy as that though, it's not, it's not, it's easier said than done. Following the way of Jesus is hard, we can be terrified. My, uh, my mom's faith, my, my mom had great faith when she was alive. She's now with Jesus, having a party with Jesus. And uh, she, uh, she was believing for children. The doctor said, you shouldn't have children, you can't have children. She had a kidney transplant before I was born. And from that kidney uh, transplant, whatever, they said, uh, don't even try, you will die uh, through the childbirth process. So not only will your kids likely have conditions if they're born, but you might not make it. Every doctor advised her not to have kids. So she said, Lord, what is your word? God said, you will have kids. So she went ahead and acted on God's word. That's why my name is Samuel, because Hannah asked God for a son. That's why mom named me Samuel. And Hannah's son in the Bible was Samuel. And so, but not only did she have one kid, but because she acted out on God's word, God blessed her with twins and remarkably good looking twins. (laughs) Arguably, such a blessing and favor from the Lord from heaven. But I'm saying, not, not my word, but your word. Let's do this. Let's have the guts. Let's have the courage to pray Mary's prayer. 
And it does take courage. Number one, number one, it's your faith in 2022 is not alone. Your faith is not alone. I think of, I think of my mom's faith before she passed away. And, and when, when she went, when, when we put her coffin down, um, she died in the first year of our church plant. And when we put her coffin down, we put a photo of Noah because Noah was born um, like on Christmas Day and she went into a coma from a cerebral aneurysm on the 18th of December. So uh, seven days after she went into a coma, she never got to meet her first, uh, she never got to meet Noah, her, her first grandson. And, uh, and so we put a photo of Noah on her casket and it read 2 Timothy 1 verse 5, I wrote it on the back, I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and then in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now also lives in you. To me, the faith that resided in my mother lived in me and I'm gonna pass it on to Noah. Mary's prayer and her faith, I believe, was a resounding sound. I believe she told Jesus many times as he's growing up, hey, you know, there was this time and this angel showed up and I freaked out and it was scary. You know, Jesus, sometimes it's scary to adopt the things of heaven. And, and then next year, oh, mom, tell me that story again about the angel. It's like, well, there was this word from heaven that I was going to conceive. And, you know, and, and then he gets to about nine or 10 years old and he's like, what do you mean you're a virgin? Can you tell me more? It's just like, okay, well, that's another conversation. Um, but okay, so like, but, and so she's telling Jesus, there was something that I believe that he would have thought back in the garden, that he would have thought back about Mary's journey. Thought like, listen, mom, mom risked everything. She was betrothed to Joseph and the, and the penalty for adultery at the time was the death sentence. So in the reputation of her sinning in that way, her life was at risk. Not only that, the shame and, and having to you know, talk about the fact that she's got a growing word of God on the inside of her spirit was embarrassing in many of her friends and family. When you have a growing word of God and, you, and, you, and all your friends don't know God and they're not Christians, sometimes a growing word of God in your life can get very uncomfortable when people start to learn that you actually go to C3 Toronto. What, you go to church? Not to mention that church that bought that property on Geary Avenue, aren't they corrupt and messed up? You go to that one? Yeah, but I got a growing word of God. There's something awesome is happening in this place. There's something great that God is doing something in Toronto. And at some point you get so pregnant, you can't hide it anymore. I'm not gonna take that analogy too far. When the word of God grows, and so your faith in 2022 is not alone. You might be thinking, man, I don't have anything left, Sam. I don't even wanna pray for a word from God for 2022. I'm tapping out. I'm exhausted, I got no energy to believe. If I stand up here and say to you, 2022 is gonna be your best year yet, how many of us would honestly go, yeah, totally, I'm totally thinking that. I think many of us through the pandemic have been worn down to a point, hey, listen, if I just lower my expectations, I'll be less disappointed. Is there anybody that relates to that in the room? You're allowed to be honest as C3 Toronto. Is there anybody that, has, that relates to, I'm putting my hand up. Maybe if I just lower my expectations, I'm gonna be less disappointed. You, you gave me the expectation of a three-week curve that's turning into like a 300-week curve. It's true, going into this year, we can feel depleted. I don't know if I can believe. Mary's story, thinking about it, I think about my mom. Man, if I feel like tapping out on my faith, I think about my 57-year-old believing mother to her deathbed, about the trials and the pains and the pressure that she went through. And I think about the saints before me and my faith is all of a sudden energized and I think to myself, I can't tap out now. I can't stop now. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse one to three, it says, therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let 
to throw off everything, C3 Toronto from 2021 and the sin that so eagerly entangles us and let us run with perseverance into 2022, the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus because I ain't getting any faith. Read in the news with the, who's the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith for the joy set before Him endured the cross. I know how He wanted to pass that cup. I know how He didn't want to pray Mary's prayer, but He did it anyway. And He did it with joy, scorning His shame and sat down on the right hand of the throne of God, considered Him who endured such opposition from sinners so that we won't grow weary or lose heart. There is so much for this next year for you. If you would not grow weary, if you would keep your eyes fixed on the past saints, on Jesus, on those before, Jesus said, listen, disciples, pray thy kingdom come, pray thy will be done. But I'm not gonna leave you with just that. I'm gonna show you my life through a testimony where I had to pray the very prayer I'm telling you to pray. And why did I pray? Because my mom did. That's why I'm here. And it encourages us. I had the privilege to go to Billy Graham's house just a few months ago. Billy Graham is, for those of you that don't know, is an amazing evangelist. You can put up the photo of his house, leave it there for a few seconds so people can... I <laughs> literally did the opposite. <laughs> um, so went, went there, this is in Charlotte, and, uh, and he... Over 3.2 million people gave their lives to Christ through Billy Graham's preaching. Talk about a cloud of witness. Just one saint. He's no longer with us anymore. Put up the next photo. This is, this is, this is him and his wife, Ruth's uh, uh, tombstones, like just, just kind of down the way from the house, right there. I got to stand right in front of the ground where Billy Graham's bones and his wife, Ruth Graham's bones, are lying in the ground. On Billy Graham's uh, tombstone, it uh, says something like a, a, preacher, a preacher of the gospel for the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what he did. And I think about it, and I'm like, man, you know, could I believe that 3.2 million people could get saved through my ministry? Well, I might as well believe that more tomorrow than less yes. I've got to walk into 2022 with some faith. Billy Graham would want me to. I can't tap out through my exhausting little pandemic patheticness. I've got to think about the mission ahead because I'm surrounded, but not just Billy. Like you read his wife's tombstone. This is the one that I want to talk about because it really st stood out to me. Her tombstone says this. You might not be able to see it. It says, end of construction. Thank you for your patience. She says she got this when she was driving down the highway and she saw a sign on the side that said end of construction. And she's like, that's gonna be when I go into the ground. <laughs> we never stop being built up in the Lord through our entire life. If you feel hard pressed and pressed down and you feel like you're just completely demolished in depression and I don't know if I can write anything on a dream card for 2022, you might just simply be under construction. We all are. We're all going through something. We're all, we're God, what does God want to do through you? What, does, what is God building in you right now? What is God establishing in you to see more miracles come through your life through the next year? We can't give up. You can't give up. You cannot give up. There are too many people that are partnering with your faith. Point one, your faith for 2022 is not alone. My faith depends on your faith. Billy Graham's faith depends on my faith. The Bible says is that our faith right after Romans chapter 11, the chapter on faith, it says it's not done. It is not done. Our faith is connected with all the saints throughout all of history. Number two, stay focused on what builds your faith. She said, uh, no, the, Gabriel said to her, she's like, how will this be? She's questioning it and he said, listen, the presence of God is gonna overshadow you. I believe in the next few days over the new year period that there will be a moment with you, I'm standing with you and I'm prophetically declaring that there is gonna be a presence, cloud of glory moment. I hope it happens in church because that would be awesome, but I pray that it would happen in your bedroom. I pray that it will happen in the shower. I don't, wherever it happens, I pray that there is a glory overshadowing moment 
that is undeniable where you just get a sense of God's Word for 2022. That you just, somebody's believing that and needs to clap for that. Amen. I believe it. You could be even thinking about it right now. Online, in the room. God might be starting to energize and and put the defibrillator of vision on your heart that says we are not done yet. And I believe it. You aren't restricted by restrictions. God is unrestricted. I don't care if we have to wear masks, we're gonna advance the kingdom wearing masks. I don't care about whether we have to seat far apart. I do care about it. I wanna hug you. I hate having to ask permission to hug somebody. Just saw someone here tonight. I feel like I haven't hugged them, haven't hugged them in a while. I haven't seen them in a while. And I just, can I give you a hug? I just really wanna hug you. They said, no, and I did it anyway. That's not true. They gave me permission. Number two, stay focused on what builds faith. She, uh, Gabriel said, God will overshadow you. Even Elizabeth is gonna have a child. God was so gracious to Mary that he, he's like, look, there's a miracle happening right beside you. She's six months into her miracle. Look on the miracles. And when you see a miracle, don't, don't do those weird things where you're like, oh, you know, miracles always happen to everybody else and never happen to me. That, that's not the point of a miracle. The point of a miracle is that you see it and you pine for it for yourself. You should see a financial breakthrough in someone's life and go, well, it's only a matter of time. God's that big. You should see a healing in someone else and go, well, it's only a matter of time. God is a big God. You should see relational success in someone's life and restoration and hope and healing. And you're like, yep, if I believe for it, it's only a matter of faith should inspire faith. Faith should build faith. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of your faith. He said in the garden, keep watch with me unless you fall into temptation. The temptation to live life carnally. The temptation to don't dream God dreams. The temptation not to listen to God's word, but to pray. The temptation to once again pray the prayer, my will, not yours, God. My will. He said to the disciples, keep watch. Keep watch lest you fall into temptation in the name of Jesus that we in this room would not live another year trying to do it out of our own strength. That we would not live another year trying to accomplish our word when we haven't heard God's word. That we would not put a resolution down on paper that isn't authored and ordained from God. What about my fit body? Is God gonna put that one down on the paper? Sure. He could, well, yeah, he wants you to work out. But it's kind of like, We can dream a bit bigger than that. Amen? There's nothing wrong with that, like putting, I'm not telling you not to put down some goals that don't seem super, super divine. I'm just telling you, make sure there is one, make sure the ultimate one is the divine one. Make sure it's the compass that points in the direction. I'm gonna get the keys up. Amen. Let's not fall asleep to the things of God, the happenings of God around our life, lest we fall into a, Meaningless, temporal, carnal uh, existence. I was just talking to Jura before the service. She stepped out on God's word, found herself in a miracle. God said to her that you will, in the internship, the the interns back in the day uh, when travel was around, got, got a chance to go to Uganda and some different things and help out with church planning. She felt God say, it's gonna be you. You're gonna be one of those interns going to Uganda. She didn't know how she could make it work, or, or, but she, tried, she trusted to believe God's Word anyway. She trusted God's Word and, and stepped out and, and reached out and half of the funds came in straight away. And this testimony isn't a funds testimony. This testimony is bigger than that. You just start stepping out on God's Word and it's funny how the pebble in the pond, one ripple goes after another ripple, it turns into something. And she's like, so I trusted God's word. I ended up going to Uganda. And she said this. She said it was a, it was a faith-altering experience. She's sitting right there and she's nodding her head. So if you don't believe me, I'm not a liar. Faith-altering experience. Because she would witness the lives of people that she would say, God, like, I don't understand, like, you know, this complex thing about how they don't have much, but, you know, and... And God's like, well, what do you mean? Like these kids are happy, they're happy and they're in faith. There are many people in Toronto 
that have a lot more money in their bank account, but are far poorer. And the perspective shift and the value shift and the realignment, and it cha- it, you said it changed you. You said you came back and you were, you were different around worship and seeing from different reasons and different around community. So it's like the establishment of God's Word birthed something in you that imagine if you had just played it out in your own human strength. You know what? I actually don't have the money. Can't do it. Sorry, I'm going to opt out. You chose to trust God's Word, but not only that, James... This very attractive young man looks at a photo of Jura in Uganda. And you didn't put this together until we started talking because I'm like, these things tend to happen. James first looked at this photo of Jura in Uganda. And I don't know if this is the way you would say it, James. Uh, You didn't know I was going to be talking about this. But James is like, man, I like what I'm looking at. (laughs) That photo of Uganda wouldn't have been a photo from Uganda if you didn't go to Uganda. And you're thinking, well, this is is dumb. No, it's not dumb. This is someone stepping out on God's Word. And what we do is when we hear testimonies is we play it down and water it down or that would have happened anyway. No, it wouldn't have. Someone needs to step out on God's Word. Someone needs to keep watch and recognise the miracles and we need to talk about it. We need to celebrate it. We need to brag on Jesus. Why? Because it keeps people praying Mary's prayer. So James says, hey, this was your line. It was such a good line. You, 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 you reach out to Jura and you're like, hey, I see that you went to Uganda. I'd love to hear all about it. Let's go do coffee. I want it, right? And it works. Now look at you guys. You're holding hands. You're in love. It's beautiful. You step out on God's Word. I'm just saying, you don't know what's on the other side of obedience until you've walked through obedience. Matt Household was believing for community. He was believing for paid work. And he was also believing for marriage. So God gave him a word and he said, hey, Matt, it's time to build the church and gave him an image to serve on the kids team. So Matt went and served on the kids team. Matt found all three things he was praying for and believing for by stepping out on God's word. He found paid work that he was praying for and believing for because he got connections through the team that he was serving with. He found a sense of meaning in community, not just having connection, but a sense of meaning that he was making a difference. And he just got engaged recently to Sierra. This this just sounds like a relationship series now. Here's how to find your spouse. Step out on God's Word. Well, yep, that's totally true. (laughs) It's good. God, man, talking about gifts under the Christmas tree, the gifts that God has wrapped up for your obedience. Man, if, if it always takes courage, she had, to, she had to sign up and say, yes, I am your servant. I, that, that statement, I am, the noun she, she, she attached her identity to was the deepest form of identity where the angel didn't even need to say anything else, he just left. That could be a compliment to your prayer time that God's like checks in with you. He's like, yep, you're good. And just goes out and starts talking to someone else. Jesus said, the greatest of these will be the servant. The moment those words came out of her lips, Mary would pray this prayer in 2022. She would be in her bedroom. And she was about 16 years of age when she was praying this prayer, by the way. And she had the courage to say, you know what? I'm not married to him. I'm probably going to get kicked out of the town. Everyone's probably going to hate me. Man, the things they're going to say on Instagram. What the heck? It's going to go viral, probably. God's like, yeah, I'm counting on it. She says, you know what? Who cares? I'm your servant. If it results in the penalty of adultery and they kill me, well, I'm a martyr for Jesus anyway. I am your servant. I hope that right now, under the sound of my voice, as you're listening to this preach, that you would be making a vow prior to 2022, before God, that says, I'm not gonna do it my way. Maybe you tried 2021 
with a whole bunch of, hey God, here's my word. Hey God, here's my word. Hey God, here's my word. May it be fulfilled. Hey God, here's my word. May it be fulfilled. Maybe you want to try it different this year. So over the Christmas break, I hope that you're processing this and I hope that you're making a vow in your spirit that unlimited potential is available, divine, orchestrated, authored, pioneered destiny is on the other side of you praying Mary's prayer. Could we have that kind of courage as a church? Could we write down a question mark at the top of our goal list instead of a bunch of exclamation marks? Could the question be, Lord, what is your word? It's gonna cost you, it costs Jesus, it costs the disciples and it costs Mary. There's gonna be suffering attached to it. Jesus suffered, the disciples suffered, so did Mary. But if Mary never prayed that prayer, we wouldn't have this story. On the other side of everything being different for you, on the other side of you saying, God, I'm your servant, may your word be fulfilled in me. How do you alter destiny? How does everything change? What if on the other side of your obedience, man, I feel like I'm already in January 2nd's preach. What if on the other side of your obedience, Toronto was never the same ever again? Just bow your head and close your eyes. There are some people in this room that have never invited Jesus into their heart. There are some people watching online that have never invited Jesus into their heart. The first word that you would want fulfilled from God is the word of Him coming into your life. You haven't been walking with God and you wanna commit your life to Jesus you wanna do life with Jesus, that was the point of Christmas, was Him to come into this world and be God with you. If you're watching online and you've never made a decision to invite Jesus into your heart or you wanna recommit your life to Jesus, we're gonna pray a prayer, we're gonna do this. If you're in the room, same question. We're gonna pray a prayer, we're gonna do this together. So if that's you in this place, if you're online, I'd like you to type in the chat and reach out to the church and say, hey, that's me. I'm someone that wants to pray this prayer. If you're in this room, what I want you to do with nobody looking around and every eye closed, I want you to slip your hand up. Just raise your hand nice and high so I can see it and say, yep, that's me. I wanna pray this prayer. I wanna invite Jesus into my heart. I wanna read, thank you. I can see your hand, you can put it down. Is there anybody else? Or I wanna recommit my life to Jesus. You know, thank you, there's another hand, that's awesome. Thank you, that's three. The reason I'm telling you a number is it gives you courage. It's like, hey, Elizabeth's going through this too. You know that you're not alone. Is there anybody else? You wanna join these three people that raised their hand and there's other people online. Thank you, there's a fourth hand, you can put it down. Nobody looking around, respect each other's privacy. I'm not gonna invite you to the front, I'm not gonna embarrass you. This is the most important decision you'll ever make. This will be the greatest Christmas gift you could give yourself. Is there anybody else? Four people raise their hands. And just one more moment. I wanna commit my life to Jesus or I wanna recommit my life to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Why don't you stand to your feet, church? Amen. I hope you're starting to dream. Open your heart up to the impossibilities of God. Thank you, Jesus. There are four people in this room and likely others online that are praying this prayer and their story is about to be altered forever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray this prayer together. Let's be standing with them and believing with them. And then we're going to give you some more instructions. So pray this prayer with me, a prayer of faith. Say, dear Jesus, let's pray it with some more faith. Dear Jesus, I thank you that you died on a cross for me. Forgive me of my sin. Help me follow you from this moment on as my Lord and my Saviour. In your name, Jesus, amen. Amen. Come on, give God some praise one more time. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen.
Okay, so if you're one of those people, you need please be connected with us. We've got next steps afterwards. Let someone know in the church. We'd love to get connect you to this church. Doing life with other people, doing faith, not alone is, is key. Let me just encourage you with this. The Bible said that God's Word never fails. There wasn't room for error. God's Word never fails. Our trust in God's Word fails all the time. But when the two marry up, it's dynamite. Trust God's Word for 2022. Be believing with enough courage to pray Mary's prayer. I am your servant. May your Word be fulfilled in me. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father God, I just thank You so much for this room. I thank You for the courage in this room, for the faith in this room. Lord, I thank You for Your Word that it never fails. Let us trust You as we walk into the new year. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Amen.